Episode 13 Pre-Interview Transcript Subject Calvin Sparling Files of Jessica Valenza, Investigator Jessica How old are you, Calvin? Sparling I turned 65 just last month. Are you married? Children? Divorced. That was a long time ago. No kids. You said in your voicemail back to me that you participated in an experiment at the Paranormal Research Foundation in Denton, Virginia. You lived at Foundation House for seven weeks? In the summer of 1972, I answered a classified ad in the Freelance Star. It said they were looking for young folks to take part in a paranormal study. Paranormal research was coming on big back then. Is that what attracted you to answer the ad? Were you interested in it yourself? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I was very young. And like a lot of people, I was looking for something. Only I had no idea what it was. I thought this might be it. I saw myself as having an open mind and wanted fresh experiences. <laughs> I tried LSD and was thinking about traveling the hippie trail and spending some time in India. I went through that searching phase myself. Yeah, I was a bum. Well, I guess it's lucky you weren't drafted and sent to Vietnam. Well, by then, the troops were coming home. The last of them pulled out while I was at the house. Oh, sorry. That's right. In hindsight, I wish I had been drafted. Why is that? You should get on with the real question y'all want to ask. Okay. So you went to Denton? Which is in the middle of nowhere. A lot of deep, dark woods. There was once a slave plantation around there. The big house ain't easy to find. And we finally came up on it. And my friend dropped me off. I was supposed to live there for three months, with room and board taken care of, plus $250. What were your first impressions? The researchers were eggheads, but overall pretty laid back. They all lived at the house with me and around a dozen other subjects, so it had a commune vibe to it. They did weird science, they grew their own food, they saw themselves as revolutionaries part of the human potential movement, pioneers of a whole new science and understanding of reality. Where there's smoke, there's fire. What does that mean, that last part? It was their motto. History is filled with unexplainable and dismissible phenomena. They wanted to stop ignoring and start explaining it. If they could explain it, they could control it. Make it work for us. Us? People. Humans. They wanted to change the world. What kinds of experiments did they have you do? A whole mess of things. They held up cards with numbers on the other side and asked me to guess what number they were holding. They had me stare at a gal in another room while they monitored her heart rate and so on. I figured... I was good at staring, because next they had me eyeball a string of random numbers produced by a computer and try to force them to go a certain way with my mind. It seemed kind of silly, but it was interesting. What else do you remember about these experiments? The Gansfeld experiments were pretty odd. I'd sit in a sensory deprivation chair with headphones and blacked-out goggles and talk out loud about what I saw in my mind's eye. What I didn't know at the time is they had somebody else trying to beam the image of an object into my head with their own mind, you know. Afterward, the docs would hold up four cards with images on them, a horse, an apple, that kind of thing, and ask me to point to the one that was beamed at me. We also tried it with dreams. In my case, lucid dreaming as I can do that. Did it work? Well, the researchers didn't jump for joy or nothing, so maybe not. I was starting to wonder if they were really just studying blind chance. Later, I found out I did better than most, either through luck or something else. 
But you left the program early anyway. You quit. Yep, I did. Can you tell me why? <sighs> At a certain point, the experiment stopped, and the docs let all but three of us subjects go. I soon figured out the experiments had been a vetting process to find a certain kind of subject, and me and two of the others were special for some reason. We were the ones who took part in the big one. Can you describe the experiment? The docs took me into a small room in the basement that they turned into a machine. Metal cylinders like columns stood against the walls, all wired together with thick cable. Something about introducing energy at different frequencies, they said. As for me, I sat on a chair in front of a table that was all shiny, made of stainless steel. On the other side, they put a freestanding mirror where I could look at myself. And that was it. What was upsetting, though? It doesn't sound all that... I ain't done yet. They turned the machine on. Ah, okay. What happened then? The first umpteen times over as many days, nothing at all. The last time, I sat down and got ready to be mightily bored staring at my own face. And then the room started to hum... The machine made a lot of noise. Not this time. I mean, yeah, they were loud. A kind of a whirring white noise, but this was something else. The air itself seemed to hum. The pulsing I could feel as a vibrating knot in my chest. A sound so deep, I barely heard it at first. But once I noticed it, it was all I could hear. The air was thick with it. Everything went fuzzy, vibrating. My eyeballs shook in their sockets, my teeth. I wanted to yell at the docks outside to stop the experiment and let me out, but I either couldn't talk or couldn't hear myself. Gravity crushed me into my chair. I could hardly breathe. You were scared? It? No shit. I was scared. Oh. No, sorry about that. Anyways, all this was bad enough, but it wasn't the worst part. The worst was these feelings that came out of nowhere. I was scared shitless. Yeah, but it was more than that. I don't even know what to call it. Dread, maybe. Animal terror. A feeling I was not only being stared at, but that something stood right behind me drilling holes into the back of my head. Okay. Underneath it was this emptiness. A sense I didn't matter. Nothing mattered. Like I was a lab rat about to get injected with cancer. Which is scary enough for the rat. But suddenly it realizes, oh, I'm just a rat. All along I thought I was important. But there are giants who don't regard me as important at all. That does sound terrible. That's when the table liquefied. What? The whole time I was staring at myself in the mirror, I saw my eyes bulging, my mouth open wide, a brownish yellow aura flaring around my body. I thought, if only the guy in the mirror would move, I could too. I could get out of here. But he just sat there. And that's when I didn't even recognize him as me anymore. Just some dumb, long-haired kid crying and pissing himself. Then he started to fall apart in the vibrations. He got even fuzzier, like he was breaking up into atoms. But a part of me knew, just knew, I was finally seeing him as he really was. The way the universe does unfiltered by human eyes. I suddenly didn't want him to move. I wanted him to stay put. I had a dead certainty he was going to walk on out of that mirror, and it wouldn't be good. Wow. What about the table? You said... Yeah. It started shimmering, like the steel had liquefied. Like you look at a fish pond and you know there's bluegill under there swimming around. Incredible. 
A hand came out of it. Jesus. An ordinary hand, thin like a woman's, reaching up from the steel tabletop, not out of the steel. It was the steel, like the metal had turned to latex and the hand was stretching it to its limits. The fingers played like they were tickling the air, waving hello. I didn't want to know. All I knew was I didn't want it touching me. I was the lab rat now, looking at the needle dripping with cancer. What happened next? The fuse blew, and the machine powered down. The heavy feeling broke. The air had a oily sheen to it. But otherwise, reality sort of settled back where it was supposed to be. I could hear myself screaming now. I'd puked all over myself, sitting in my own shit and piss, and shaking like a leaf. Because at the end, the second hand had slid out from under the table and caressed my knee. What did it feel like when it did? Do you remember? It ain't something you forget. The hand felt cold and dead. At first, it was like a corpse's hand accidentally brushed me. Then a whole other horrible feeling shuddered through me. I thought I was dead. Again, I can't describe it. Empty, panic, corrupt. The words for it haven't been invented yet. What did the researchers do or say after the experiment ended? Oh, they asked me a million questions. I don't remember what I told them. I kept asking if they saw it too. Did they see it? They wanted to know if it communicated with me. What did it say? I couldn't stop crying. It was even barking like a dog at one point. But they were all grinning and excited. And one of them told me I'd made history. Said I was like the first monkey shot into space, making first contact. That's how they put it. Like even though I was a lab rat, we were all on the same team, trailblazing the big cure. I slept for two days, and when I woke up, I hoofed it out of there in my pajamas, all the way back to Fredericksburg. What do you think was going on? What did they do to you? I spent my whole life thinking on that very question. I'd messed around with LSD, and at first, I thought maybe they'd triggered a flashback, though I'd never had a bad trip. Later on, I stopped believing that. They did something far worse to me, ma'am. Something that left a permanent mark. Permanent? How so? So many times in my life, I'd look down at my hands and not believe they were my hands. I'd look at people and they'd fuzz around the edges into black dust, like little dancing fruit flies. I'd look out my window and see a world I suddenly understood wasn't real, and I could almost see the darker one behind it, millions of fish swimming behind it, watching us. I'm so sorry about what happened to you. You should get on with your next question. Okay. What do you think of us going into Foundation House? Do you think we're making a mistake? <laughs> mistake? Hell, I'm glad all y'all are going. Why do you say that? I want y'all to find out what happened to me. If the Kirklands agree to interview you on camera, what does your availability look like this week? I don't want to be on camera. This ain't about that. Then why did you agree to this pre-interview? I want to know what happened to me. It's the only thing that's missing. I want to know what happened, and if there's a cure, so my bad luck stops. Most of my life, I've been a dead man trapped in a live body. Cursed! How about we... At this point, Sparling terminated the call. What a wild interview. Not our usual thing, but weird AF. Obviously, the Foundation gave him some type of hallucinatory drug and or messed with his brainwaves somehow, but his story's terrific stuff. I called back multiple times, but he wouldn't pick up the phone. I'm so sorry I couldn't get him to commit. I tried my best. 
There's still potential here. I recommend we put Sparling on ice for now and reapproach after we go into the house. We can make it a quid pro quo if we dig up anything interesting about the experiment he went through. Imagine if we find out what drug they gave him. We could help him, and it'd give us an amazing storyline for the show. Jess. Fade to Black website page.